Hello, my name is Mark Boyer, and this is a follow-up to my warehouse receipts uh, initiative. Okay, uh, basically, where warehouse receipts have all the markings of fulfilling uh, Isaiah 40 on, and that's comfort to all God's children. And frankly, I think evil men did evil in order so that good could result okay uh i posted a video on my wall uh about uh volunteer you know voluntary consent uh to be slaves and uh there there's a passage in there where they outline where the banksters are outlining uh the huge fraud they're committing and that they it'll be enormous riches and uh, they have escape they they have an escape file you know a, an escape plan and a plausible reason for why they did it and the fulfilling of Isaiah 40 is that a plausible reason because uh, these guys are talmudists and they actually read the bible and have been orchestrating the events of our end times with jesuits and all kinds of occultists, and uh, uh, they're stuck on Revelations, and I've said it many times. If everything in Revelations has to happen, then Jesus Christ died for nothing. And there seems to be a general omission by everyone that there's this prophecy of Romans, okay? And... Romans is heavily tied to Isaiah especially, and, G well, Jesus' prophecy, okay? Romans is clearly, and Hebrews, is clearly uh, scriptural doctrine, okay? And there has to come a guy who does that. Now, I'm claiming to be this um, misunderstood character of our end times, and he's referred to as the one, okay? The one is uh, there's several references when i first got swallowed by the heart of the earth which happened on uh, the week before remembrance day 2004 and uh I, there was a week there of uh, truly impressive events uh, but i was swallowed by the heart of the earth at that time and that's in matthew 12 okay I really have all the markings of being uh, Luke 11 and Matthew 12's Jonah, who there will be no miracles other than the sign of Jonah. Okay. Um, I find myself uh, fulfilling prophecy, and I only really see it after the fact. And there really is a, a biblical passage to the effect of, uh, who knows how the mind of a prophet works? Okay, and that's all there is to it. So basically, I filed, you know, shortly after uh, I filed my, you know, this article on warehouse receipts, uh, I had this epiphany, okay, and, you know, just a bright idea. And uh, on the sidebar, uh, I've noticed that solar flares happen around certain things that I do, like direct hit ones, not side, side flares. You know, direct hit solar flares happen. Uh, and I'm not saying all solar flares are related to things I do, but there are many, many occasions of solar flares happening at or about the same time. And there was a nice solar flare that happened when I had this bright idea of... Uh, filing with the Scottish High Courts, which is what my notice of liability and notice of intent with the city is all about. Okay? Now, I know there's a connection there. Okay? And then four days later, uh, I, I, I went and filed this, and there was another major solar alert put up. And I'll post it up. Okay, and that's the guy where I get my solar uh, forecast. Not forecast. He gives a weather report. Cool, cool site. I'll post it up beside this one. But you know, while I was serving this, these major solar flares were happening, and I'm saying that the end times is uh, 
tribulations is triggered by a solar flare. Okay, And as to Isaiah, we all shine on like the moon, the stars, each with their own luster, and the sun. John Lennon made it into a song that was quite popular. It's called Instant Karma, which is exactly correct. Okay, now, let me try to explain, okay? Uh, Luke's version of this, I'm sorry, Matthew's version of this, same event, of, he describes it as, everyone will be, who is of God, will be 30 times better. Everyone who is, uh, and some will be 60 times better, and there will be some who will be 100 times better. And that happens in a flash, in a solar flare, at God's command. And it triggers in that day. And there most definitely is a whole reality after this in that day event. And basically, uh, I'm the first to admit that what I'm pressing is... Can, it cannot happen if people are stuck in the mindset that everything in Revelations must happen. It's impossible, okay? And that's a messenger outlined in Romans who brings the spirit of life, okay? And rescues these people and authorities from the spirit of death, which is what they're stuck in, okay? Uh, what can I say? Uh, it, it, it's... Read the pamphlet, okay? It's quite good. Now, one of the key things, and I have to point this out, is several references in the Bible make, make it clear that the messenger of our end times will simply not be understood by anyone in his own neighborhood. And, 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 and another story of Jesus, he won't be understood anywhere in his own country. And in John's version, he won't be understood anywhere in the world. And it's a metanoia. Okay? The message of upholding God's creation really is the augmentation of Abraham's trust of 400, of augmenting the trust of upholding God. And it does it with one word. It's really simple. I'm the, and it really is. Do you want to be, instead of being of God, which is Abraham's trust, by upholding God's creation, you are with God. And that really is the offer. Okay. Now, to explain further this all shine on like the moon, stars, and the sun, 30 times better is everyone's DNA is a dual spiral that goes up. Okay. In a solar flare flash, everyone... All those who are of God will have four spirals and corresponding connections across it. And that you will be 60 times, 30 times better under this change of your DNA, which happens in the blink of an eye. Uh, everyone will have the power of miracles in that. By that, I mean you can come up to an apple tree and get an apple. You can tell your garden to grow, and your garden will grow. Uh, it's the return of paradise on earth. And it, it comes from a thought for everything. Okay? It doesn't come from a machine. It doesn't come from a scientific formula. In fact, it says that, you know, it'll make the wise look foolish. The new covenant will make the wise look foolish because it's so simple. And I'm the first to admit that nobody gets it, even among close friends. Okay, so how can I expect people halfway around the world to get it? It, it? And I'm under these phenomenal publication bans. Now, basically, it's my contention that the stone of destiny is what's called the stumbling stone of Romans 9 and 10. Okay, and I really don't think it would be a hard sell to convince the Scottish high courts that that's their destiny and their uh, trust in the stone of destiny. It, it, you know, they actually believe, and it's to me, it's true, that it was the stone that Jacob had his dream of the ladder to heaven, you know, stairway to heaven. And there's also beliefs that it's 
uh, this cursed stone that really has no, you know, a demonic side to it. And but bottom line is they took it back from the, the king, and uh, the queen formally returned it. And I really think it wouldn't be a hard sell to convince the courts that that fulfills a Romans seven thing that God. It was as if God was in prison when he was being used as collateral uh, to back the death of World War II. Now, I outline this in this pamphlet, okay? And basically, um, I'm filing with Gregor Robertson, okay? Now, BC is municipalities. They tried to drive principalities down our throats, and BC rejected it. So the principal, principalities, like many other provinces in Canada, those rules do not apply. Okay, when you're in a principality, the the scepter changes to the from the mayor's office to, to from the mayor's office to the chief of police's office, and he is uh, now uh, placing the community under occupation by foreign bodies. Okay, and it's enforcing uh, on occupation on its citizens, and he's taking orders from an attorney general of Canada or any of his generals. Okay, and they are above the law. Okay, the prime minister is under this form of the supremacy of parliament is actually uh, what two Thessalonians two is highly misquoted. They say, there's going to come a guy who's going, going to call himself above God. It, yes, but it, 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 it's, it's very clear. It's much clearer than that. He's going, there's, there's going to be the Antichrist is a guy who calls himself what people perceive to be God. And God is supreme over the law. And people perceive no one to be above God, and that's exactly what an attorney general is, and uh, they are playing the role of a shatan and princes of princes of Daniel's prophecy. Okay, these guys read the same Bible. Okay, presently there's a revolution being planned in the United States, and you know what? I refuse to believe that that doesn't result in the United States or North America being broken up into four parts because and four generals taking over one part because that's what happened with Alexander the Great. They're just rehashing history. They, they are refute. What can I say? Uh, we're in our end times, and these guys are doing everything in winter. You know, it... it it doesn't take a moron to read, I, you know, the art of war and say, you draw your enemy into a conflict in winter because it'll demoralize and destabilize and do everything else. And Occupy World clearly showed that. And uh, authority seems to be driving the American people into a revolution in the winter. And the, what can I say? It's, uh, things will fall the way they fall. And that's all there is to it. As I say in this letter, I frankly don't see things lasting till spring. Okay. And basically, uh, if no one locally will believe, then I have to file in courts in Scotland. And the reality is, is I have to file first against the mayor and the municipality to tell him that he's, he's operating under treachery. You know, he's being subverted, subjected to treachery by attorneys generals who are ganging up on them, okay? And uh, I'm doing these events around here that are quite spectacular. You know, I'll do a video coming up of things that are happening around me that are quite serendipitous, okay? But the, the bottom line is, is um, uh, read the pamphlet. It's a very good pamphlet. Uh, it, it expresses it very well. Uh, I'm saying that... Uh, Look around you. You know, it's November of 2012, and uh, uh, something's got to jump out of the bag. You know, all of these events, if they think it has to happen in Israel, fine. But you know what? There is the story of Isaiah and the story of Jesus Christ through Paul, 
and uh, you know, and you know what? Someone has to press that in that day everything will be beautiful, and those are the buttons I'm pushing. And exactly as to prophecy, there will be no miracles, only the sign of Jonah. And that's it. I have fulfilled in excess. I have fulfilled all those prophecies that you know uh, the, the the Hebrew nation uh, thought Jesus should fill. Okay, uh, uh, what can I say? Uh, we are in our end times. Uh, I've fulfilled uh, what Chuck, a guy called Chuck Measler, did a video on the science of God and came up to the conclusion that seven. Uh, if Jesus only did seven of the 200 lines that he supposedly filled in the Bible, that it would be uh, one, two, more money in all of that in the world, odds that he wasn't the Messiah. Okay, and I agree. Okay, now I've got one of those cases of I fulfilled at least 200 lines of the Bible. Chapters in verse in sequence. And, again, standard of pick any seven you want, and the chances that I'm not a prophet are one with over all the money in the world. Now, I filed a hyperinflation index damage award back in 2004 after my chest plate was snapped in two. Okay, And the judge said, file for damages. Okay? And... On that date, I died. Okay, I filed a damage award, hyperinflation index damage award, and it's greater. It's approaching. If every, you know, Isaiah 40, if every atom in our heliosphere of this, of our sun, was worth a dollar, that's how big my damage award is. It's hyperinflation indexed, and it's a default damage award. Okay, and after eight years of pursuing it, I come across this warehouse receipt thing, and all you really need is my case file, because warehouse receipts have more than enough money to pay the whole thing also. Okay, so it's not about me. It's getting a warehouse receipts filing, and I'm convinced that since the Order of the Garter gave back the stone to Scotland, and... I refuse to believe that a court order by on the Scottish High Courts, anyone who has a claim that they're being screwed of being under God, has a legitimate claim to file against the stone, which is now in the Scottish High Courts, and they can file the claim against the House of Lords. Because they really are a people who are not a nation. A Romans 9.10 thing. Okay, so is Canada, a people who are not a nation. And what can I say? Uh, everything's in place for a bloodbath this winter, and it's being drawn in in winter uh, because despots simply will never let go. And uh, uh, I'm working under severe restraints. Okay, uh, I haven't been myself. Since I was swallowed by the one eight years ago, okay, that proved to be the beginning of the 2300 evenings and mornings. And what can I say? Uh, there, Fukushima went off with another solar flare. Um, it's impressive how solar flares seem to follow me. Um, uh, the, uh, the patterns that happened while I was filing this were impressive. Uh, that, that I'll post on my link as well. Um, bottom line is, uh, the appearance of a guy with an offer to repent or perish is supposed to happen before Revelations is fully fulfilled. And Revelations, if Revelations happened, then Jesus Christ died for nothing. End of story. Okay, and everyone's stuck in the fact that Revelations, every last lousy thing in Revelations must happen. And, you know, under that version, one-third of the world must be destroyed by fire. And still, they'll refuse to repent. It's my, what can I say? That is the spirit of death of Romans 7.
And it's supposed to be conquered by the spirit of life, which is a thought that changes everything. And everyone who is of God, you know, will be saved. Everyone who in their heart is upholding God's creation will be 60 times stronger. Or, or, yeah, that's 60 times. The, the, there's going to be the 30 times better, the 40, you know, the 60 times better, and the 100 times better. And there are so many people. Uh, there's a line in Romans 11 to the effect of, Look how many there are. Okay? There is a message of hope. And it's uh, repent. In, in the Greek Bible, uh, in, in the Greek translation, it's metanoia. Total about face and how we think. And it's done with one word, which is the very word of God. Okay? In the beginning there was the word. Okay? And the very word of God is the creation. Okay? And God upholds his creation in heaven. And the promise of the Lord's Prayer is that it'll be the same on earth as it is in heaven. And when we start upholding God's creation in our heart, it will be the same on earth as it is in heaven. And that's the promise of the Lord's Prayer. Okay? And it comes from an idea. And it's ignited by a solar flare. And everyone can be saved um, by authority surrendering to love. What can I say? I'm fighting a good fight, and uh, I'll carry this on in another video. But in the meantime, uh, read this pamphlet, okay? It's posted on the link. I'll post other links. it be quite a long link. And... Uh, uh, May you live in interesting times. Okay? The, the one that's in me has been the one who's triggered more than one end time scenario. Uh, we go through this and it's called a harvest, an awakening, a new creation. And, uh, what can I say? It has to happen. Uh, there's ten, there's thousand generations of those who love him who insist that this happens, which is the second commandment. Evil men did real evil so that good can result. And uh, it's repent or perish. Thank you very much.